hi guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're all really well uh grab yourself a cup of tea or something nice to drink chill out and today i have got a video for you about some misconceptions about disability um obviously i kind of want to start this by saying that everybody everybody's disabilities are different and i can't talk for everybody and all that kind of thing but these are just some of the things that i have encountered as a disabled person that perhaps people believe that aren't actually true um, i just thought it would make quite an interesting video to talk about them talk about some of the kind of misconceptions that people have and then talk about why they're not true um, or why they are true perhaps and yeah just give my Give my opinions on them so i hope you find it interesting and informative and let's get started so the first misconception that i come across quite a lot is that everybody with a disability needs a wheelchair and i guess this possibly comes from i don't know like when you see signs for disability it's often a person in a wheelchair so people kind of assume that to have a disability you are in a wheelchair and that's just not true at all um yes some people with disabilities use wheelchairs either all the time or some of the time but a lot of people with disabilities never need to use a wheelchair their disabilities affect them in different ways they might be invisible disabilities um could be all sorts of different things from a visual impairment a hearing impairment um a sort of chronic condition that means they don't need to use a wheelchair but yeah certainly you know not, not everybody with a disability will be in a wheelchair. The next misconception is that if you are in a wheelchair then you can't walk at all and again I can kind of understand why some people might think this um, because people kind of assume that when you're using a wheelchair you're using it because you can't walk um, and for some people that is the case don't get me wrong but for a lot of people um they're what you call ambulatory wheelchair users so like myself i can walk but i also have to use a wheelchair because i struggle to walk perhaps long distances or if i'm having a bad day or if i'm in a lot of pain all these kind of different things mean that i need to use a wheelchair and I've had kind of weird reactions sometimes like if I've been out in my wheelchair and then I've got out of my chair to like I don't know reach something or to stand up for a bit or something like that people can often give you you know funny looks or make funny little comments about it and say like oh my god like you're walking like what what's going on and certainly when I first started having to use a wheelchair I found it really difficult because I felt like I just had to stay in my wheelchair um because i was really worried about the kind of judgments that people might make um but as time's gone on i've kind of realized that actually there are so many people that use wheelchairs for all kinds of different things and that you know i just need to use my wheelchair in the way that works best for me um so if i'm out and i want to get out of my wheelchair for a bit or stand up or reach something then that's absolutely fine and it's almost just a, an excuse i suppose to educate someone if they make a comment um you know if you want to use it as an excuse to educate them otherwise just ignore it um but yeah certainly not everybody that's in a wheelchair can't walk um a lot of people that are in wheelchairs are able to walk as well this next misconception kind of relates back to the first one a bit and that it is that all disabilities are visible um, and i think this is becoming a lot more well understood um in today's society although there are still there's still a long way to go but basically every i don't know i think there's a lot of trouble like with people using disabled toilets or um using like blue badge parking spaces and things like that and people will look at them and think well they don't look disabled why why do they use a disabled toilet why are they taking up a disabled parking space and actually you know a lot of disabilities aren't visible you know there's so many types of disability if i went out and i didn't have my wheelchair for example or i wasn't holding my stick at the time i wouldn't look disabled whatever that is meant to look like um <laughs> i look relatively normal whatever you know i don't like using the word normal but i don't look different but i still have disabilities that affect the way i can live um if someone has like i said like a hearing impairment or if they have a visual impairment you might not necessarily be able to see that if they have um something like crohn's or colitis and they have um uh 
you know, what do you call it? A bag, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right word, a colostomy bag or something like that. Um, they may need to use a disabled toilet, but you can't see from, you know, through their clothes that they have that disability. So yes, some disabilities are quite visible and you can see, you know, straight away that someone is disabled. But a lot of the time, you know, there are other disabilities that you couldn't see unless you knew that person um, or they, you know, pulled up their top to show you or whatever. So I think it's just important not to judge too quickly and, you know, to accept that there are going to be people who have disabilities that you just can't see. The next misconception that is banded around quite a lot is that being disabled means that you get lots of money and I guess people assume that this comes from benefits and things like that and I think yeah this is a massive misconception I have a lot of friends who are disabled I'm disabled myself and you know <laughs> yes people are entitled to state benefits and things like that um it's not easy to get them the paperwork you have to fill out is just it's incredibly tough it's soul destroying having to go through all the things that you can't do that you find difficult talking about your health conditions and whether they're going to get worse or you know what your health is like and all the things that you're not able to do it's horrible having to fill those in and then the amount of money that you get and don't get me wrong like I am massively grateful that benefits are there because I I would be stuck without them I I mean at the, I still can't afford to move out or anything like that but they give me a little bit of independence they allow me to um, save up you know towards a wheelchair or to, you know to have a mobility car and things like that but I don't think that they are as much as people think they are. People, I don't know, I guess there are people that um, claim benefits wrongly that give people with disabilities a bad name and they can appear to be living in the lap of luxury and, you know, have all this money. And in reality, actually, for people with disabilities, you just, you don't have huge amounts of money, you know, from benefits. Yes, people with disabilities can work and do very well for themselves, but certainly through benefits, you just don't get as much money as people think. Um, a lot of my friends I know really, really struggle. You know, it's like, can I, shall I buy food this month? Shall I put the heating on this month? Um, needing to spend extra money i've spoken about this before you know being disabled is very expensive um there are a lot of extra costs that people don't necessarily understand and those benefits go very very quickly on things like transport carers medication um you know hospital appointments and all that kind of thing um, medical equipment it is not a lot of money and it's a massive misconception that people with benefits you know are, are well off and they live a cushy lifestyle because the majority of people that I know who have benefits and have to rely on those you know the money from the government would much rather be healthy and be able to work and earn a decent living rather than having to rely on handouts and not knowing where the next bit of money is coming from having to fill out all those forms so yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's going to be a, it's it's going to be a massive misconception for a long time, I think. And unless you know somebody or are somebody that has been in this position, I just think it's really difficult for people to understand how little money there is available and how little help there is available. So my next misconception is that accessibility in the UK slash the world has massively improved and <laughs> This is a bit of a difficult one and I guess it depends what you compare it to because I guess if you look back, I don't know, 50, 100 years or whatever, then yes, accessibility has improved. A lot of people, you know, 50, 60, whatever years ago, you may not see so many disabled people and that was purely because they were often housebound or in institutions and they couldn't go out because the accessibility was rubbish. So. In some ways accessibility has improved, you know, it is easier for people with disabilities to get out. However, I would still say there are there is a long way to go. Um, 
Accessibility is one of my biggest anxieties whenever I go out. If I go up to London for a hospital appointment, I'm constantly worrying about am I going to be able to get on and off a train? Will I be able to get on and off a bus? Um, will there be a lift working? Will I be able to get into a shop? All these kind of different things. Will there be disabled toilets? And it just seems crazy that it's 2019 and we're still worrying about such little things that aren't little things really they're things that could be made a lot better but they're not um and if i wanted to travel like further afield like if i want to go on an airplane or if i want to go to a foreign country it's just sometimes it just gets to the point where you're like it's not worth it because it's too much hassle trying to deal with the accessibility of trying to get onto like an airplane or a train that goes you know like the eurostar or something um and then having to contend with a whole different country which you just abs have absolutely no idea about accessibility it's just it's stressful and it's frustrating because i want to live the best life i can i want to get out and do things that my friends are doing i want to try and you know achieve stuff and one of the biggest barriers is the lack of accessibility and it's just crazy because it just it would make so much difference if I could if I could know that I could get up to London on my own in my wheelchair without any hassles it would make my life so much easier but because I know that that isn't the case if ever I want to go up to London or if I need to go up to London for a hospital appointment I have to make sure I've got somebody with me I have to book 24 hours ahead for a train um, I have to make sure I've studied the like tube map to make sure I can get on the right train for that and it's just exhausting and you've already got your like disability and your health conditions to worry about and then having to add into that accessibility is just it's just crazy so yes things have improved since you know the 1920s or 30s or whatever but there is still a massively long way to go you know to make like the world inclusive for everybody Okay, so this next one, I don't really know if I would call it a misconception or just something that happens, but it is that disabled people are happy for strangers to come up to them and ask really personal questions. Um, and then this is variable, like a lot of people don't do this, but I have noticed that being in a wheelchair seems to attract <laughs> interesting comments from people that you don't know. So, I don't know, people seem to think you're fair game for asking about like your sex life or whether you can do certain things or like asking really intimate questions about your health conditions and disabilities when they don't even know you and it's just weird like you wouldn't go up to a perfectly healthy able-bodied person and start asking them like oh are you able to have sex are you able to do this um what's wrong with you blah 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 but for people in a wheelchair like we get this a lot for some reason and I don't really understand why what it is about being in a wheelchair or being disabled that makes people think that they have the right to ask those questions um but yeah I mean obviously it depends like if you know the person and it's the kind of thing that you talk about then fine but it's just a bit of an odd thing to go up and ask a complete stranger and to kind of really intrude in their kind of personal space now I I don't have a problem necessarily with people asking general questions so I don't know like if it was an appropriate situation and a stranger just happened to sort of say to me oh you know do you mind telling me why why you use a wheelchair or whatever you know I don't mind like explaining a little bit about my conditions or you know telling them a bit about why I have to use a wheelchair. Um, I mean, if they came up to me in a supermarket and just spotted me from the other side and walked up and asked me, I'd think it was a bit strange. But you know when you're like meeting people for the first time and that kind of thing sometimes comes up, I don't really mind. But it's when like, yeah, it's like when you're in the supermarket and somebody just happens to like start talking to you and all of a sudden you're being asked like your life history and really like intimate personal questions and you're like, okay, whoa, just because I'm disabled doesn't mean that I want to talk about all these things with you. So yeah, just, I don't know, I would say just treat disabled people as you would treat any other person. And if you wouldn't go up to a healthy, 
able-bodied person and ask them those questions, then probably don't go and do the same to a disabled person. <laughs> My next misconsumption is that disabled people want you to jump in and help them without asking. And again, this is a little bit of a tricky one because I don't want to kind of say a blanket no on this because sometimes I do appreciate, you know, like if you're struggling to like open a door or something like that and someone happens to be coming the other way, it's really nice for somebody to just like say, oh, you know, let me help you and hold the door open while you get through, that's brilliant. What I find really frustrating though is like, I don't know, people might come over and just start like moving your wheelchair out the way because they think it's being helpful or they'll like pick up your walking stick and move it somewhere because they think that's helpful and actually it's not because they've moved it somewhere that's really inaccessible. Um, or just, yeah, I mean like, the thing I hate the most is generally being moved without being asked. Like again you kind of think about it like if you went up to a healthy person and like literally picked them up and moved them somewhere without asking them it just it wouldn't be normal whereas I've had people come up to me and like move my wheelchair without asking thinking that they're trying to be helpful well either thinking they're trying to be helpful or just because I'm in the way apparently and they wanted me to move I've had people do that and it's just not okay um so I would just say like just ask, say like, would you would you like some help? Can I help you do that? Um, I have absolutely no problem with that. Like the other day I was at the supermarket and I was getting into my car. My mum had just gone back into the supermarket to put a wheelchair back in and I was getting into my car and I was just going to shut my door and someone was walking past and I don't know, they obviously thought I was having a bit of difficulty because they came up and they were like, oh, do you want me to help you with the door? And I kind of said, oh no, no, it's fine, I'm okay. Um, but I didn't really mind them asking because they'd asked. They hadn't just come and like tried to shut the door on me or something. So yeah, I don't think disabled people have any problem with people asking them if they would like help. It's being helped without asking them first. Um, so yeah, I would just say if you wanna help someone, just ask if they want that help before you give it. The next misconception that I hear so much, and it's especially around like the time of like the Olympics and stuff, is that Paralympians manage to do amazing sporting things, so all disabled people should be able to do those things. And the, yeah, like I said, this is something that comes up pretty regularly when the Olympics are on. People will watch the Paralympics and see these disabled people who do like awesome sporting achievements, you know, wheelchair basketball and racing and swimming and all these kind of things. And then they come and look at you and they're like, well, you're disabled, why aren't you doing those kind of things as well? And they kind of just assume that every disabled person should be able to do all the same things. And it's just, it's like saying, like, you know, when you watch the Olympics and you see, a, someone, you see somebody on there and you say to them, well, that person's doing like a thousand meters in however many minutes why aren't you doing it in that time um it's because we're not all the same we don't all have the same talents just because i'm disabled doesn't mean that i'm the same as like a paralympian you know they are olympians and paralympians have you know amazing sporting ability but not everybody in the whole world does that's why you know we have the olympics otherwise it would be boring if everyone could do it so just because you're seeing like you know, someone in a wheelchair who is able to play basketball, it doesn't mean that your friend in a wheelchair is also able to play basketball. Um, we're all different and we all have different talents and different abilities, so just don't expect everybody with a disability to be the same. This next misconception is one that I have heard pretty regularly since I was young, and it is that young people don't have disabilities. Um, so many times, not so much now because I'm getting a bit older, but um, you know, when I was like, I don't know, 15, 16 and I was using a wheelchair or using a walking stick, you would get comments, that, you know, from people saying like, oh, you're, you're too young to be using one of those, you're too young to need a wheelchair, why are you using a walking stick? Young people shouldn't need to use walking sticks. And I mean, to be fair, I do still get those comments now, like, oh, you know, what are you doing with a walking stick? You're only 30 or you know why you know oh you're far too young to be ill or you're far too young to be disabled and I don't know if people say that because they mean well and they kind of saying like I don't know oh it's sad that you're 
disabled or so I don't know but you know disability and chronic illness doesn't discriminate because of age you know young or old you can have a disability or a chronic illness so yeah any any age it doesn't matter what age you are you know you don't have to be a certain age to be disabled and I don't know I wish people would kind of understand that a bit more because having that said to you is not exactly comforting let's say you know someone coming up to you and telling you that you're too young to be disabled it's like thanks thanks for reminding me yep I'm young and yes this is my life it's slightly different to what I had kind of hoped it would be um but yeah I just I wish people would understand that you know disability can affect anybody of any age um and yeah just not to comment on it <laughs> The next misconception that I hear a fair amount is that disabled people don't want to join in with normal activities and that it'll upset them if they get asked. Um, this is something that I really, really struggled with. Um, not so much now, but certainly growing up. When I first started becoming unwell and becoming a lot more disabled, um, my friends would kind of stop asking me if I wanted to do stuff with them. They would, I'd kind of find out that they'd gone out or they'd done stuff and I hadn't been asked. And usually the reason that they hadn't asked me was that they were concerned that I wouldn't be able to do it or that it would upset me if they asked me if I wanted to do it and I couldn't. Um, and I totally understand that. And especially from like a young person's point of view, that's something that I can really understand would be a tricky kind of situation to navigate but even into adulthood you still get it where people say oh I didn't ask you because I didn't think you would want to join in with this or you'd be able to join in with this and in actual fact certainly for me and a lot of people that I know I would much rather that people invited me to things so I don't know like say people say some friends were going bowling just as an example and they kind of thought, oh, well, you know, is she going to be able to do it? Like, is lifting a ball going to be too difficult for her? Um, and if they made that decision not to invite me and then I saw that they'd gone, I would feel quite upset. Whereas if I got invited, you know, yes, there might be times when I say, actually, I'm not able to do it this time, I'm not well enough, or, um, you know, I'm having a bad week or whatever it is. But there'll be plenty of times as well that I'll actually say, yeah, I'd love to come. And even if I just watch or if I adapt it slightly differently, so if I use like the um, the ramp thing and put the ball down there, there are plenty of ways that I can adapt activities to so that I can still join in with them. And yeah, I think being left out and feeling lonely is one of the most difficult things that I struggle with. So I would much, much rather people included me, even if they might not think it's something that I can do, because, you know, at the end of the day, I think that's my choice to make, whether I can do it or not, or whether I want to watch them do it. Like, I don't mind sometimes just going, and if it's, not, if it's something I can't join in with, just watching people, at least I feel part of it. So I would say, like, if you have friends or family who are disabled or have chronic illness, don't stop inviting them to do things because you're worried about upsetting them. Um, I mean, obviously talk to them and find out what they would prefer, whether they want you to ask them, because it will differ for different people. But for the vast majority of friends that I know, like we would much rather be asked and be able to make that decision ourselves than for someone else to have that decision made for us. So here's another misconception that I hear so often and it upsets so many people and it is you look well therefore you must feel well and I guess this is a pretty easy assumption to make. You see someone in the street they look pretty good um, so you think oh they must be doing really well. Um, and in actual fact, that's not often the case. I can sometimes put on, you know, I can put on makeup, I can get dressed, I can go out and I can look like I'm doing pretty well, when in actual fact, I am really not very well, I'm really struggling, I'm in a lot of pain, um, I might literally just be out for like five or ten minutes and I'm just about holding it together, but as soon as I get home, everything's gonna fall apart and I'm gonna have to spend like weeks recovering from it. Um, and I know, I think generally people mean well when they say this, you know, I've had so many people say to me, oh, you're looking really well, like you must be feeling good. And like, I don't want to get angry with them because I know I think they're doing it from like a good place, but it is frustrating because I can't, I find it really hard to then come back and be like, actually, 
no I'm not feeling very good and it just I don't know the conversation then gets a bit awkward um so yeah I guess I just wish that people wouldn't necessarily just judge on looks because like I said there are a lot of invisible disabilities um a lot of mine you know you wouldn't necessarily see it if I was having a lot of trouble with them so it's if it can be really difficult for people to understand and to explain that but rather than sort of telling someone they look well perhaps just sort of ask them like how are you you know how are you doing at the moment rather than like making that assumption that they must be doing well actually ask them how they're doing and that will get a conversation started so the next assumption uh, misconception is possibly a bit of an odd one but it is that disabled people are inspirational now i don't really know i don't know i'm not quite sure how to deal with this one because <sighs> Yes, there are a lot of disabled people who do really inspiring things and I look a lot of, at a lot of my friends and I find them very inspiring the way they cope with their illnesses and um, the way they, you know, push themselves to do like pretty amazing things despite what they're going through. But it's more kind of, I don't know, like when somebody who maybe doesn't know you that well perhaps sees you like out and about and they're like, oh you're so inspirational for coming out and and living a normal life and you know just I find it quite patronizing you know I haven't done anything particularly you know noteworthy I've literally left the house um and I know again it's coming from a good place I think they're trying to be nice but all I've done is come outside the house and yeah you know that might be quite an inspirational thing for me to have done if I've been really really struggling and I haven't left for months but it's the kind of it's that kind of patronizing comment of like I don't know it's almost like assuming that disabled people you know probably should just stay at home but if they get out like wow that's amazing um and just like people saying that you're inspirational for doing like normal little things um yeah like I said it is a bit of a difficult one because I don't want to kind of blanket sort of say that you know people with disabilities aren't inspirational because I know so many inspirational people I think it is more just that kind of those kind of patronizing comments of I don't know just telling you you're inspirational for not really doing anything just for being disabled um that kind of frustrate me a bit so my next misconception is that a disabled person won't be in a relationship with a healthy or able-bodied person um and this is something that i've experienced i guess like secondhand quite a lot um i've got friends who are disabled who have a able an able-bodied healthy partner and they often get comments about like oh aren't they so good to like be with you or like you know treating them as if they're like your carer and actually you know it's a very equal relationship just because one one sort of per person in the relationship is disabled doesn't mean that it can't be an equal relationship a lot of people seem to assume that you know if i'm looking for a partner i would be looking for a disabled partner and I don't really understand why I would like why just because I have a disability why can I not be in a relationship with someone that doesn't have a disability um and it's those I, I find I know like my friends um partners find these comments really frustrating you know being told that like oh they're so good for like being with that person and it's like no I'm with that person because I love them not because I feel sorry for them or because they've got a disability so yeah just because someone is disabled doesn't mean that their partner has to be disabled like you know you can love conquers all as they say and it will go across any kind of boundaries and you know it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be your carer yes they may have to do different things to other people in relationships but it doesn't mean that that partnership can't be an equal partnership and then my last misconception for this video is that all disabled people know each other um and again this is something that i've experienced quite a lot you'll kind of meet somebody and you'll get talking and they'll be like oh do you know so and so and i'll be like oh i don't think so and they'll be like oh you know they're the one in, in the wheelchair that lives like on the other side of town or something and i'm like oh okay no i don't think i've ever met them 
And people seem really like confused that you wouldn't know this other person that's in a wheelchair who happens to live like three miles away like that way. They kind of, I don't know, they seem to think that you, every like disabled person seems to just know each other because you're disabled. It's kind of similar, like, I don't know, like if you go to a foreign country or something, you get it where people are like, oh, have you met the Queen? And it's like, well, no, I live, I live in the UK, but it doesn't mean that I know the Queen. Um, and I think you kind of get the same with disabled people. They just, I don't know, people just assume that you, you happen to have like this big old club where every disabled person knows each other. And it's just not true. Like, there are a lot of people that live in my town. Yes, there are people that use wheelchairs. No, I don't know all of them. Um, not to say that I wouldn't get to know them if I met them, but just because we have the same condition or because we both use a wheelchair doesn't mean that we're automatically like going to be friends. You know, we are still people, we're not just disabled. So yeah, not everybody with disabilities knows each other. And that is it for my misconceptions about people with disabilities. I really hope you found it interesting and a little bit informative and just hopefully picked up some like real stuff that is about people with disabilities rather than just the misconceptions. If you have enjoyed it and you'd like to see more, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to press the bell as well. That'll mean you get notified every time I upload a video. And please leave me a comment. Let me know if you've encountered any misconceptions about people with disabilities um, and kind of how you challenge those misconceptions. And also let me know if there's any videos you'd like to see me do, whether that's about disability, chronic illness, or something completely different. And I will see you again in another video very soon. Bye!